Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about resilience. That was the, the brief today. And in preparing my remarks, I thought about resilience in a fairly broad sense. Uh, the big gig in town from a financial services perspective, as Richard, as you point out, a highly regulated sector, is operational resilience very specifically and a consultation going through at the moment, um, actually three consultations, one from Treasury, one from the PRA and one from the FCA, uh, considering new regulation in order to support firms' ability to be operationally resilient and better serve their customers. You know, that's really important stuff and the lessons that we've all learned over the last six months, whether from within financial services or more for further afield, should feed into that consultation. Although I think for the purpose of today, it's probably a little bit too narrow to think about it just in terms of operational resilience. Uh, and, and Richard, actually, to pick up something that you said, resilience for me is much more about strength and strength is much more about people uh, and, and the culture within which people work in any particular firm. So I just want to kind of dive into that a little bit. Um, I thought about three interrelated verticals um, when preparing my comments. The first being the operating platform, including policies, business processes, etc., uh, the second vertical being market engagement, value propositions and the strategy that firms are following. And the third being this um, really interesting business of people and culture. And actually, uh, just to reference the poll that you ran, it was really interesting to me that skills and capabilities came out as the second highest in terms of the priorities for your participants today over the forthcoming 12 months or so you know that in a sense is really pleasing to hear because actually that's where I see the key to resilience and, and potentially the weakness across a, a number of firms at the moment uh, but let me take them very briefly in turn in, in turn in terms of the operating platform in six months I think we've learned an awful lot about how we pivot to a virtual working environment how we adopt new technology platforms in a regulated sector like financial services, an awful lot of good work done very quickly around things like regulatory reporting. So I don't want to dwell on these things too much. I mean, the, the evidence of the success of how financial and, and um, uh, how, how the sort of finance and banking industry has pivoted is writ large. In the first couple of weeks post March the 23rd, around 300,000 people working in bank, banking and payments uh, institutions moved to work from home. You know, that went pretty well. There was good continuity of service to customers. Um, reasonably robust uh, continuity of service to employees. And, you know, I think it surprised everybody at how quickly and how effectively uh, the, the finance and banking industry pivoted. But, you know, it didn't all go well. There were some issues, particularly around sort of call centre capacity and certain other aspects of, of customer engagement. Uh, and of course, we've all experienced the issues with regard to working from home and the technologies that are available to us. But in terms of those operating platforms, I mean, the work that I did with uh, Director of Operational Resilience at UK Finance really sort of concluded that there were three key takeaways around the operating platform. Um, the first was to encourage firms to collaborate and share with their competitors wherever they can. You know, we firmly believe, and I firmly believe, that there isn't necessarily competitive advantage in having a slightly whizzier technology platform versus your competitor firms. You know, it's better to serve the, the, the customers of the industry as a whole through collaboration and sharing wherever possible. Second key takeaway was engage your stakeholders very early and at every step. And I think that's reflected in your comments around business development, Richard, if I may. Um, without fulsome engagement with customers, then the business development piece has stuttered and is stuttering. Uh, and therefore, how you, how you then configure your operating platform to deliver those products and services is, of course, constrained. So I think that's a key takeaway. And then I guess related to that, the third key takeaway is a customer first strategy. This isn't about how do I serve my employees? How do I make sure that I can continue to offer the services that I do? It's about in looking at it from the customer perspective, standing outside and looking into your organization when you are configuring your operating platform. So those are my kind of thoughts around that first vertical. In terms of the market engagement and value propositions, look, I agree with so many of the comments that Andrew made around clarity of strategy, clarity of vision, you know, the importance of that tension between a CEO and a chair or a board more broadly, but actually also the importance of having that very clear and agreed set of roles and responsibilities. And if there is disagreement on strategy, then at least that is clear, uh, articulated and discussed at the appropriate meetings. You know, that much is, is really, really important. 
Um, when I look into the 270 plus members of UK finance, very specifically, it's my observation that the firms who put in place the right governance structures and the culture that sits around that, uh, those that have allowed for fast and responsive decision making, um, those who have focused on innovation and specifically their innovation around their market engagement, um, and those that have adopted a fail fast approach are the firms that have done best. Um, and I think, as I say, your, your polling makes very clear that many of you still have significant concerns around business development, and therefore I think that's a, a critical point to focus on. Uh, I want to pull out a couple of examples of specific firms and how they've responded, because I think it begins to make the point around people and culture, and that's the kind of last takeaway that I want to drop into this conversation. <clears throat> 